Well, good afternoon, and uh, this is Ian R. Crane, and it is shortly after one o'clock on um, Wednesday, the 7th of July, uh, 2020. And uh, this is uh, one of the random videos that I'm going to be making over the next few weeks as my strength recovers. And as you can see, I may not uh, be able to get into the fields with my Frisian friends, but uh, that doesn't stop them coming to me. And I really wanted to uh, uh, put this out today to say thank you. I am incredibly overwhelmed and I'm desperately trying to control the emotion, but I am totally overwhelmed <clears throat> by the response to the crowdfund which was set up at the behest of uh, Brian Gerrish and um, a number of other uh, people within the UK column and Alternative View communities. And literally, it has been just 40 hours since the crowdfund went live with an initial target of £10,000. But uh, just before I started this broadcast, the amount raised was 22,352. And uh, so thank you so much, because that has enabled me to commence a six week course of therapy. Needless to say, it's an alternative therapy, but a six week course of therapy, which I will start now um, before the end of the week. Now, it does mean that I have to travel, which is not the easiest thing for me at the moment. But um, I'm, you know, on the basis that uh, I'm, I really need this uh, treatment, then I'll endure the discomfort for the few hours to uh, get to the other location um, where I will be basically for uh, the next six weeks. I will come back north and um, give updates from time to time with my uh, uh, Frisian backdrop here. But... Um, it really pains me that uh, I can't be at the forefront of the, the fray at this remarkable time. Uh, uh, you know, I've had the misfortune to basically be hospitalized or convalescing, recovering uh, since this madness unfolded back in March. And what is gratifying, as I intimated the other day, is to see so many new people coming into the fray and many, many young people, because it is the young generation that are really being targeted here. And, uh, you know, speaking to uh, friends and, and uh, colleagues, I know that, uh, you know, it is teenagers and, um, you know, preteens that are feeling the pain the most and no surprise you know basically they are scared on the basis that you know what future do they have you know is there a pandemic out there that's uh, going to kill them no absolutely not but is there a concerted effort by governments all around the world to destroy economies to prevent them from having any opportunity to sustain any kind of reasonable lifestyle? And the answer to that is, without any shadow of doubt, yes. And why is this happening? Primarily because we're allowing it to happen. You know, I've been making a few short forays um, into the, uh, the town here. And, you know, it's gratifying to see that the people wearing masks are very much in the minority. And, you know, random conversations with people in the street you know, it indicates that people aren't falling for this. And the longer it goes on, people are asking more and more questions. And it's very evident that Boris is not in control. Who is in control? Well, is it Dominic Cummins? <laughs> Doubtful. Is it the puppet masters of Dominic Cummins? Now we're starting to uh, make some headway. So, you know, it's really important that people do research. And, and what is fantastic is that, you know, more and more and more people are digging and, and coming up with, you know, new insights and new documentation, which reveals you know, exactly what's occurring here. But the World Economic Forum 
and uh, you know all the mega wealthy who are not affected by this uh, keep referring to the Great Reset. And uh, for them, the Great Reset is about ensuring that they mop up the last remaining bits of wealth, which is probably less than 5% of the total global wealth, but they mop it up from amongst the proletariat. And, you know, my heart goes out to people like uh, Dr. Iqbal Adil. You know, he is a British Pakistani doctor who has been practicing medicine in the UK since 1986. But he saw through this outrage, he saw through the conspiracy and was openly speaking, you know, within his uh, community. And, you know, as far back as late April and May, was encouraging people to join him in Parliament Square to call for the restoration of freedoms and uh, ability to earn a reasonable livelihood. And, and now, you know, for his honesty, for his conviction, for his insight, he has been struck off by the GMC, the General Medical Council. And the GMC, of course, is you know, very similar to the MHRA, the Medicines and Healthcare Regulatory Agency, that front for the pharmaceutical industry that has managed to get David Noakes and Lynn Thayer extradited and locked up in jail in France and ensure that GCMAF, you know, which was proven to be an extremely effective treatment for not only cancer, but many, many other illnesses and afflictions, including um, autism, as was being pioneered by Dr. Jeffrey Bradstreet in Australia before he was so brutally murdered um, uh, after having his clinics raided in the US. He was found face down in a river in South Carolina with gunshot wounds to the chest, which was, of course, declared a suicide. So one could argue that, you know, David and Lynn fared slightly better. But, uh, you know, now they're locked up in a notorious prison in the south of France and potentially have to wait for two years before their case comes to trial. So you can understand my reluctance to not be too specific about the treatment that I see, now seek or where or with whom I will be uh, receiving it. But uh, suffice to say that, you know, the funds raised have not only given me this opportunity, but uh, they've also provided me with the opportunity to look at further treatments, should I need them. Um, but uh, beyond this, then, unfortunately, it would mean that I would have to travel out of the country. And uh, traveling at the moment is extremely difficult for me. So, you know, we'll see how this goes. And um, obviously, I will keep observing you know what is unfolding here and you know my heart goes out to all those people who have been affected by the the lockdown and and to those who are currently being cushioned from the effects of lockdown and uh, all the spin-offs of it and particularly the furlough scheme because something like half the country's workforce was furloughed that's slowly reducing. But of course, as it's reduced, then the number of unemployed increases, uh, you know, exponentially. And my prediction is that there will be six million people unemployed by November once the full effect of the lockdown is revealed and the, the furlough scheme is, uh, you know, is, is no longer available. And of course, those people who run small businesses who basically are already out of business because uh, the banks have hoovered up their loans and, and of course are doing exactly what they did in 2008 and, and stealing their assets. So, you know, this affliction of lockdown and uh, the economic devastation is very carefully scripted and of course those people who have been following my and many others uh, talks over the years will know that we have been predicting this you know in whatever guise but have been predicting it for well over a decade in fact i think it was 2006 
when um, you know I first broached the uh, the subject of you know the inner sanctum and the various uh, secret societies that uh, and not so secret societies that it used to effectively expedite its agenda and um, I think the uh, uh, the presentation was actually called Hidden Agenda and it was recorded in Glastonbury at 2006 and it's still available on YouTube but it's been very very well hidden but uh, you know I was also talking about the specifics of what's occurring with healthcare and with our food you know, when I was talking about Codex Elementarius and that presentation dates back from 2007. And then, of course, the truth injection, which I again recorded in Glastonbury in 2009. And uh, then I decided that it was important to give as many other people a platform uh, as possible. And that was why I introduced the Alternative View events to create a platform for other researchers, you know, who were... Uh, um, using their intuition and and uh, researching and then wanted to share their insight and uh, you know unfortunately so many of the alternative view presentations which are now pretty much all available on the alternative view youtube channel have uh, sadly um, come to be the facts so please bear with me as i seek to return to uh, full health and uh, really get back in fully into the fray. But even if I am not able to do that, please not only follow those who are putting their lives and their livelihoods on the line, such as Dr. Iqbal Adil. Uh, you know, follow the UK column, their insights three times a week at one o'clock on Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays are truly truly exceptional and then patrick hellingson with his radio show uh, broadcast on sundays the 21st century wire and all those others who are get trying to get the word out and simply encourage people to do their own research and then share with their families and with their friends and get them to see what's occurring and then resist the agenda and I have to travel for some hours tomorrow. And um, if anyone thinks that I shall be uh, wearing a mask for the hours that I have to endure on public transport, then they are very much mistaken. So thanks for sharing with me today. Thanks for sharing this video around. And thanks again to all those who have donated to my crowdfund. And as we said right from the get-go, if the fund raises monies which I no longer have need for, then it will, we will set up a trust to help others who elect not to pursue the orthodox treatments of chemo and radiotherapy and have taken full responsibility for their health care and have done their research and wish to pursue alternative therapies. So thanks again, and I will be back with you hopefully in a few days. Take care now.